Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am not here with Geeky Sparkles. In this episode, we're talking about Doctor Who and she doesn't care. A lot of people don't care about Doctor Who now because the show is in a very uh, poor state. It's, uh, it's Doctor Who Cares. But there's some interesting news coming out regarding uh, rumors, rumors of who the next Doctor could be. Now, we talked before a couple of months ago about the rumor that Russell T. Davies could be bringing back David Tennant to try to salvage the show. Uh, that rumor seems to be that if he does come back, he's only going to be the doctor for an episode or two, like a like a filler doctor to try to get uh, audiences back on board with Doctor Who. But now another rumor has surfaced that Hugh Grant could actually be the next doctor. And it's kind of interesting because he was in a Doctor Who special, not canon, but a comedy special uh, back in the 90s. And, uh, you know, having somebody like Hugh Grant play the doctor is, is, is pretty big deal. I mean, he was a pretty big movie star at one point in time. And then, of course, you know, stuff happened and uh, his career kind of waned. But I always liked Hugh Grant. I always thought he was pretty good. And, you know, it's kind of interesting if this proves to be true. Because this flies in the face of everything we thought we knew about who the next Doctor was going to be. We thought that they would continue uh, to give us a non-white, non-male Doctor. And they still may. I mean, again, this is just a rumor. But they're going to, you know, possibly, possibly bring in Hugh Grant, possibly, possibly bring in David Tennant, and possibly, possibly try to course correct and bring audiences back to Doctor Who. Now, uh, again, Russell T. Davies, the you know gentleman who brought back Doctor Who from the curse of fatal death back in the uh, uh, mid 2000s, he is going to be taking over completely with Bad Wolf Productions. And Bad Wolf Productions, after he signed the paperwork, that he has complete control over Doctor Who. Bad Wolf got sold to Sony, Sony which undid Ghostbusters 2016 and gave us Afterlife, Sony, which has been knocking it out of the park with the Spider-Man movies, despite Disney. Uh, Sony, which gives us Cobra Kai, is going to be calling the shots for Doctor Who. So it's very possible that whoever is uh, uh, cutting the checks over at Sony is like, yeah, what's it going to take to get people to come back to Doctor Who, to make this uh, must-see TV again? And they're talking about a Marvel-style makeover that they want to they want to basically do a soft reboot of, of Doctor Who and open up all kinds of uh, doors for spin-off shows kind of like you know Torchwood and uh, Sarah Jane Adventures but with a much much bigger budget so let's talk about all of this before we get into it any further please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys over 261,000 subs thank you so much for the support uh, we do talk about Doctor Who, not nearly as much as we used to. Again, myself, I was a huge Doctor Who fan. It was one of my my very favorite television shows. New Who, I, I watched it live every week it was on. Uh, it was must-see TV for me. It was appointment television. I would plan my my weekend around watching Doctor Who. And, uh, you know, I was kind of on the fence about, you know, a female doctor. Um, kind of on the fence about... Chris Chibnall, but I'm like, you know what? The show needs a jolt. Uh, definitely the last couple of years with Peter Capaldi were very hit or miss. Despite him, actually, I, I'm going to be honest, Peter Capaldi is my favorite of the new Doctors. He just didn't have a lot to work with and his companions kind of were lame. You know, I'm going to be honest, his companions, not, not too good. But, uh, you know, when he was good, he was good. When he was given good material, he was fantastic. So, you know, I gave Jodie Whittaker a chance three episodes into season 11 and I was out. The show was boring as hell. Uh, it was slow. Uh, regardless of whether or not you were on board with a female doctor, Jodie Whittaker, uh, to me, never seemed like the doctor. She was never in charge. Um, she seemed like she was aping David Tennant. She seemed more like uh, a companion who thought, she was the doctor, you know, honestly, Clara had a bigger set of balls than Jodie Whittaker. And then the unforgivable sin, I, I dipped back in because they were going to bring back some classic villains, right? The unforgivable sin though, was retconning the entire show. 
uh, the doctor's origin. Finally, giving us the definitive origin of the doctor, and it was a massive F you to the audience. And uh, the audience tuned out. You know, the ratings have been terrible. Uh, the show is in the gutter. It's the lowest it's been in years. And, uh, you know, the BBC was so desperate, they brought Russell T. Davies back, uh, which gives me a little bit of hope. But there have been all kinds of rumors about who the next doctor is going to be. Um, you know, for me, unless they retcon the retcon, undo it, uh, you know, I'm still going to be pretty salty about this show because that is not the origin story the doctor deserved. In fact, I would rather the doctor not have a definitive origin. Um, you know, as Matt Smith's doctor said, you know, it's a question that should never be answered. Uh, doctor Who. And we're going to talk about that because, you know, now we've got outlets like Screen Rant being like, no, it's nostalgia. We can never go back to this. Jodie Whittaker's the future. Uh, anyway, Hugh Grant, again, looking at the past. Uh, coming from Metro, this is a rumor, a rumor. Lots of people talking about it, though. Hugh Grant in talks to be new Doctor Who as sci-fi series gets Marvel-style makeover. How'd you like to see Hugh Grant as Doctor Who? I actually think he would be pretty okay. The rumor has it that the Love Actually star could be taking over from Jodie Whittaker as the Time Lord. According to The Mirror, so, you know, it's The Mirror, the BBC series could be heading for a Marvel-style makeover with Hugh Grant at the helm, speculation around which actor will take over from Jody when she bows out as the Doctor later this year is rife, especially as Russell T. Davies is returning to the sci-fi series for its 60th anniversary. Uh, TV Insider said the showrunner is keen for the 61-year-old Hugh to bring a fresh feel to the role of the Doctor. He actually was offered the role before uh, Eccleston, as I understand it, and he turned it down. They said he offers many attributes, great actor, uh, British, award-winning, Hollywood A-lister, and excellent at comedy. Conversations are in progress. I would actually watch Doctor Who with Hugh Grant if they got rid of the Timeless Children retcon. Source said the screenwriter wants to expand Doctor Who into a Marvel-like franchise and tell the stories of other key characters who have had encounters with the Time Lord. They tried doing this, but eh, it was hit or miss. With the utmost respect to the BBC and past attempts like Torchwood, uh, they were made on a very limited budget in locations around Wales. Now the world is Russell's oyster. Sony is bankrolling Doctor Who. Expect the production values to, to increase. But they're going to expect a return on that investment, which means they're going to have to make the show marketable, watchable, popular. And to do that, they're going to have to do everything they can do to win back fan goodwill. Uh, but Sony's done it. They've done it before. You know, Ghostbusters Afterlife was uh, a pretty amazing movie, I thought. And, and they undid Ghostbusters 2016, and they just stepped over it and moved on. Learned from their mistakes. They moved on. Cobra Kai is one of the most respectful uh, reboots, sequels uh, to any 80s franchise so far. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty good stuff. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see what they do. Uh, Russell is said to be backed by BBC Worldwide, Commercial, and Sony Pictures TV, which bought a majority stake in Bad Wolf Studios in making the show. He was behind Doctor Who's revival in 2005, when it returned after 16 years off the air, and became the phenomenon we know today before Russell left in 2009. Uh, Jodie, meanwhile, will bid goodbye to her role as the 13th Doctor after starring in the series since 2017. Yeah. While there are still several months to wait until fans discover how her departure will play out, Matt Strevens, who will be exiting as the show's executive producer, hinted that her final outing will have a huge impact on Whovians across the globe. That makes me very, very nervous. Speaking to Doctor Who magazine, he said that the final story is a massive feature-length epic, which he recalled was huge to shoot with lots of surprises for fans of all ages. So help me God, if they triple quadruple down on that fucking stupid retcon, which I'm sure they will. Uh, other names in the running for Jody's replacement have been It's a Sin star Ollie Alexander, who I actually would be okay with as well. I think he's funny. And Lydia West. Uh, more recently, sex education favorite Tanya Reynolds has been eyed up. Yeah, so who knows? Hugh Grant would be bankable. David Tennant. Um, would be bankable. Screen Rant, very salty that they're even talking about Matt Smith and David Tennant. Matt Smith and David Tennant can't save Doctor Who. 
Chris Tribnell's era has been fixated on mythology, but the potential return of David Tennant and Matt Smith only feeds into this nostalgic obsession. We need to move on. We need to move on. They said that uh, bringing back old doctors for anniversary episodes uh, feels like a retrograde. <laughs> feels like retrograde. Uh, rather than sticking to this tired format, the best celebration for Doctor Who's 60th anniversary would be to relaunch the series with a brand new doctor and a bold new vision for the show from Russell T. Davies. No, that wouldn't, that wouldn't work. I don't think that would work. I think they need to win back as many fans as possible and nostalgia bait works. Nostalgia works if done properly. And again, Sony seems to be grasping that. Um, they do. They seem to be understanding that, that to make money, you need to keep your fans happy. So this, uh, this concerns me though. This was a couple of weeks ago. Doctor Who boss promises massive episode for Jodie Whittaker's regeneration. It will push everybody's buttons. It will push everybody's buttons. Oh my God. Jodie gets a good send off. I think it'll push everybody's buttons. Do we really, do we really want to push the fans buttons? Um, Jodie is very excited about who the next incumbent of the TARDIS is. The producer said, yeah, so we'll, we'll see. I mean, I, I really think to fix this show, you know, at least doing some short-term damage control, you got to undo the clusterfuck of the Timeless Children somehow. Maybe that's the big feature-length epic, but I doubt it. Uh, and you have to cast a damn good doctor. Uh, I do have faith that Russell T. Davies will do a better job than Chris Chibnall, but Davies is not the same Davies that he was 17 years ago. You know, um, he's not. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, he has kind of thrown shade, it seems like, at the direction of Doctor Who, talking about all the regenerations and all that jazz. I don't think he's really on board with it, but he doesn't want to be a dick. I think he's friends with uh, Chris Chibnall. But God, the best thing he could do is just completely rewrite that. Like that, that never happened. It never happened. It's going down the memory hole. We're not going to talk about it. We're going to move on with a better, uh, a better doctor, um, better stories, and just pretend that the last, you know, three, four years didn't happen. Step over it like Ghostbusters 2016. I'm going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.